If you would like to see the first episode about Australian native stingless bee swarms, then check the link in the description. Let's get on with today's though. We're looking at fighting swarms. Technically a fighting swarm is made up of two parts. There is the attacking swarm, which is the colonizing swarm and a defending swarm. Quite often too, they won't actually be swarming, they'll actually be fighting right around the entrance. If an attacking swarm forms, one of two things can happen. Either the defenders will seal up the entrance and hide inside for a few days. When they open the entrance again, if the attacking swarm is gone, then they simply carry on as normal. The other option is that the defenders can decide that they are going to fight for their hive. In this case, there is a battle. And what will happen is, as the defenders and attackers meet, one defender and one attacker will rip each other with their mandibles and they will fall to the ground and begin a fight that will last until death. And in most circumstances, both of the fighters will die. Though on occasion I have observed single bees staggering away from the battlefield. These battles are awesome in size. It appears that tetragonula bees are happy to sacrifice a huge proportion of their population in order to fight to either defend or invade a hive. In this book, the Native Australian Bee Book, Dr. Tim Hurd, he has cited research where they have been watching hives and have had battlegrounds with bees up to a centimetre thick on the ground under the hive entrance. In one study, he says they counted the bees and there were more than 20,000 casualties in the bee battle. Attacks or invasions may continue for weeks. Sometimes they stop and start, sometimes they're continuous. They can happen at any time of year, but based on observations, it's more likely that they will happen in summer. Here it's very late spring and we've just had a massive swarm season up here. Some people set up a trap hive when they see a fighting swarm and what this means is that they'll wait until evening when all the foragers have returned. They'll grab that hive and they will move it but it must be moved more than a kilometre away because otherwise the bees will not reorient and they will get lost when they look for their hive again. After that one's been moved, they then place an empty hive where the original hive was. And hopefully the attacking swarm will return in the next couple of days and will colonize the empty box thinking that the defenders have moved on. Reportedly this works sometimes, doesn't work others. The fighters and defenders are all female, only the girls fight. Um, doesn't stop the boys from showing up. So sometimes the male bees will show up and hang around when there's a fighting swarm. They don't fight, they just hang around. And it's believed that they do this because if the attacking swarm is successful, they will need to bring in a new queen. And when they bring in that new queen, she will need to go for her mating flight. And that brings us to swarm, num swarm type number three. Mating swarms. If you'd like to see the next episode on mating swarms, then make sure you click that subscribe button if you haven't already so that you can get notified as soon as I finish editing because I'm telling you this, as soon as I finish editing, that video is going up. Until then, thank you so much for your support. If you've watched up till now, you're really helping the channel and I really appreciate it. I'm hoping that I can build this channel into something that will allow me to spend more time making better quality and more frequent videos. Until next time, make sure you find some time to be one with nature and I'll see you for Mating Swarms.